Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Great Lake Sports Podcast. You are listening to Jack and Kyle. Kyle is going to be filling in today for Jared, helping me out. Um, needed to get this episode out to you guys. A couple things to cover. We got a lot of content. One of them being the Laporta news. That's got to be some of the biggest news going around about the Detroit Lions right now. Other than obviously that they're going to be playing for uh, in the playoffs at home against your Rams. But um, yeah, I wanted to start a little bit with this Vikings game. You know, it wasn't a huge important game for us. So I don't want to spend forever covering it. But I was at the game. If you listened to the last podcast, you heard me say that I would be there. I was excited about it. And I wanted to say that was definitely the most hype I've seen Ford Field ever. That was a crazy atmosphere. Kyle, I wanted to know, like, what was your what was your take on TV? What did it look like on TV? Yeah, I watched uh, about three quarters of the game on uh, on TV. So I was able to see the it looked very loud in there. You could tell um, pre snap for the Vikings. Um they showed pan like panoramic views of the crowd, uh, holding up the three signs. Um, even the announcers were say, like they were they were commenting like this this place is buzzing right now, um, and they were they were raving about the city of Detroit having the Lions back. You know, Lions would be able to produce for them this year, um, and so they really showed out. It was really it, it was a big big time atmosphere. It seemed like for a game that, like you said, it wasn't it wasn't of huge importance, but it was the week before the playoffs. You want to fine tune some things, but. Seemed like the city of Detroit showed out, man. You were there in person. You'd be able to speak to it a little better than I could on TV. Absolutely. I think a lot of the a lot of fans just had a little bit of uh, built up anger, as I'm sure the team did as well. It was just one of those things. Like it was such a fun atmosphere. Every time they were calling, like Skipper reported as eligible in that game, like oh probably my God. fifteen or twenty times. Yes. And every time he reported as eligible, you would have thought we scored a touchdown. Like the <laughs> place went nuts. It was it was a party. The whole thing was a party. And that was just week 18 in a game where we already knew we were going to be, you know, be in the playoffs. Minnesota's not playing their best ball right now. So I cannot imagine what it's going to be like for those of you who are lucky enough to go to this first uh, playoff game in 30 years. And the first one held at Ford Field. So moving right along. Like we said earlier, there was some uh, some injuries that happened. There was a big big battle of uh, do you start your starters? Do you sit them? What's going to happen? I don't know if it was Dan Gamble getting uh, like frisky, a little bit irritated with how the last game with Dallas went down. He decided to send everybody out there, which I'm not going to completely disagree with. You know, there was there's still a lot of injuries on the team, so there were some circumstances like with Laporta, he was one of two tight ends besides Skipper, if you count Skipper as a tight end, because he kept reporting as eligible. But you're not going to send Skipper out there running routes. Laporta was never going to be one of those guys who sat the whole game. And he got hurt in the first half. And then same with uh, Leif Raymond, too. He he was in there replacing Amon Ra St. Brown as much as he could towards the end of the game. I will say, they were sending Amon Ra all first half. But once, once you send Leif in, it's like, who who you who can you protect already at that point? Because Jamo's out of the game. You already yeah. Antoine Green was seeing reps. I don't know. What was your take on that? Yeah, um, the Laporta injury was was huge. I mean, I I understand the gamble of sending your starters out there at least for the first half. Uh, you know, you go into halftime up twenty, you might come out in the second half and you know regroup with the backups maybe um but it's still a divisional game you know it's the minnesota vikings at home it's still a game for bragging rights in the next season um so i think the gamble of playing your starters i i get where dan campbell was coming from i i agreed that he should have at least started them you hope to get like i said that 20 point lead or whatever and going into halftime you can sit everybody but didn't come out unscathed though right you said sam laporta goes out and you know, the place, the place went dead. You could tell on TV. Oh my place, gosh. You could hear the gasps in the air when he was down. Um, and then they showed the replay. It didn't look great. Um, but we'll talk about that later. And then, yeah, I think, I think the game was too tight too, to kind of throw, you know, Hendon Hooker or anybody else in there in the second half. Cause I mean, you still want to win this divisional game and they did have a chance at the two seed um, with Dallas playing at Dallas and Philly playing in the four thirty slot. So they win, a couple things happen, they're the two seed. So there's still that that reward if you play your starters and you know kind of guarantee the win rather than kind of coast through and make this a tighter game than it needed to be. Um, didn't come out unscathed, though, but I, I do agree starting the starters. Um, 
this close to the playoffs. I'm sure Lions fans don't want to don't want to see that. It kind of hung around a little too long, but I I, I kind of understand it from his standpoint with where the game was at, like what was kind of on the line. I think had we had a bigger gap in the score, it would have been one of those things where we saw our backups come in, but it was just yeah. we would score, they would score. They were just keeping pace with us all the right. way pretty much till the end until we made it a, a two-possession uh, game there. But as far as players in this game, I think Jack Campbell played his best game of the year this year, and I would arguably say that Hutch, it's tough to beat last week, but Hutch had an amazing game too this week. Yeah, he came off of a big one against Dallas, and he recorded two sacks um in this one too uh so he but he's playing his best ball he's keeping it going the last two weeks that's good to see uh like you said jack campbell had a really good game he was, he seemed like he was all over the field um the secondary gave up some big plays nick mullins had a little more pass yards than you would have liked but the vikings were kind of playing desperation at that point um and that's dangerous to play when you're playing against anybody when somebody's desperate throwing all over the place um but i thought the secondary played okay um they got out to that early lead and then they were able to able to keep it going, but I think Hutch Hutch had a really good game. That's good to see going into the playoffs. He's got two weeks in a row. He's he's playing some good ball. We needed that out of him. And then offensively, Jared Goff lights out game. He's kind of making that case again. It was the beginning of the year. How much are you going to sign this kid for? And you're going to sign him this year. And then the middle of the year, he hits his slump, and you're like, hold hold your horses. Let's yeah. wait till after next year. We'll give him his contract after next year. We already have him signed for a year, so why rush it? Well, he's returning to form. I saw I saw a headline saying Lions are prepared to pay him fifty million a year. I don't know. It, that's pretty crazy news, if you ask me. I don't know how reliable that source was, but that was just something to keep your eyes on. Other than that, Amon Ra had a great game. I thought Sam Laporta before he got hurt, obviously very impactful. Yeah. Um, that's really all I want to cover too much in this game. They stopped us in the run. Hopefully, our run game can uh, pick up a little bit here in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, and I, I have a. I have a good thought on that too. Um, wanting to run the ball, I know we want that to move forward in the next week. So we hope that that Vikings game wasn't a trend. Um, but like you said, Jared Goff had a great game, so I was able to balance it out really well. So we got the Sam L- Laporta injury, obviously. Um, as where do you think he ranks importance wise offensively? Is he the first most important player on the team? Second, third? Just wanted to hear that quickly. You could very easily call him the most important player on the offense if number 14 wasn't wearing a Detroit Lions uniform. Yeah. So I think he's a clear second. Um, I think the running back position is, um, is right up there as well. But I think you have a you know a good thunder and lightning combination there. Mm-hmm. Sam Laporta is kind of he's come on as that guy. You know he's had a monster rookie season, um, and he, they, he's all over the field. He's catching all sorts of routes. He's Jared Goff's safety blanket. Nobody else is open. It's either Amon Ra or Sam Laporta. So. He's definitely the clear, clear second option uh, for Jared Goff and for this for this Lions pass game for sure. Absolutely, and really, he's one of our best weapons against man. Um, I I really do think he's yeah, like you said, if fourteen wasn't out there, he's our he's our number one guy besides fourteen. But yeah. the big news is Dan Campbell came out today and said he is day to day. It sounded like it was going to be one of those uh, season end, ending injuries. Might not be. He said he has an outside shot of making it to this playoff game. Um, he he has a better picture of uh, what that'll look like in 48 hours. I don't anticipate him playing this week, but if he does make that return, that would be unbelievable. And then with Khalif Raymond, um, it sounded like it might be a slightly worse injury than Sam Laporta. So definitely don't expect that. But with the return of JMO this week, I think, yeah. you know, you win some, you lose some there. And then, like I said, JMO coming back this week, and also Brock Wright is supposed to make a pretty fast return here with the uh, Sam Laporta situation. Even if we do get Sam Laporta back this week, I don't think it's going to be one of those things where he comes out with you know playing ninety five percent of the snaps on offense. Um, and let's go ahead and talk about this defense. We briefly touched on them. They seem to be coming alive, and they really seem to be healthy at the perfect time. I don't think this offense has quite the weight on their shoulders with how well this defense has played in the last couple of games. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, you don't have to worry about a shootout necessarily, um, especially when you talk about the line. They're getting a lot of guys back. It seems like they're fully healthy on defense um, for the first time in a while. You got Aleem back. Houston came back. Uh, secondary's back. C.J. Garner-Johnson was was obviously in attendance. Uh, or in, in He was playing. Um 
but the defense looks healthy. And so I think that's going to help you moving forward because defense is going to carry you through the playoffs. You know, you don't have the offense isn't, isn't stressed. Jared Goff doesn't have to throw the ball 45, 50 times a game, hopefully. Um, and so it, they're, they're heating up at the right time. They're getting a lot of key guys back at the right time. Um, so ho- hopefully they can, they can put their starters out there fully healthy and, uh, you know, shut this Rams attack down next week. I know you mentioned that Minnesota was throwing all over us and, you know, I'm not going to say it was completely game plan, but I think I think they were daring Mullins both games to throw. I think that was like yeah. part of the game plan. They 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 know he's not Tom Brady. They can yeah. count on a couple of picks. So, you know what? If they hit a couple here and there, that's okay. But if you're getting turnovers at the end of the day, they can. I think that was something they were counting on. Just take the run game away from Mullins, and that's how you're going to beat him. Is make him throw, make him make those plays. And if he does make a couple here and there, great. But I don't think he's going to put a whole drive together, which. You know, he only put really two of them together. Yeah, in his starts, uh, in his starts for the Vikings, he's actually thrown the ball like 40 plus times, I think, either in all of them or all but one. Um, so, th- I mean, he doesn't come in and they're, you know, they, they're a run first team. Uh, it's kind of like with the position they're in, too, they're not in contention, really. So they're just saying, here's the rock kid, go make a play. And I think that speaks also to them being desperate. They look desperate. Um on Sunday, you know, obviously they want to win, beat a divisional opponent, but it was more so they couldn't run the ball. So, I mean, Nick Mullins was dropping back, looked like every single play. And you look down, he's got 350 yards or something, but take it, take it with perspective, take it with a grain of salt. He was, I think he also had like almost 50 passing attempts. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the guy was just, the, the guy was just throwing the ball all over the yard. And yeah, and to your point, you're right. He's not, He's not Tom Brady. He's Nick Mullen. So it's like, I mean, make him one dimensional and do what you can from there. And they, I mean, they have the receivers. Obviously, we know that. Uh, right. So they're they're bound to make plays no matter who's that quarterback. I think. I I can couldn't. I think everything you said there was pretty legit. Um, let's go ahead and take a look ahead to the Rams. Um, keys to the game type of thing. But before we get there, I, here's what I got for you, and then I want to hear what you got. Yep. So, I think. Like we said earlier, defense doesn't need to be – or I'm sorry, offense doesn't need to be as dominant because we have our defense coming back at the perfect time. Not to take anything off our offense, they need to have the gas pedal down. Yeah. But we need we can take points. I think kicking field goals is okay. You know, if, you're go, <laughs> if you can go yeah. for it in certain yeah. situations, but like fourth and five, fourth and six, fourth and seven, let's kick a field goal. We can do that. Badgley's yeah. got that in the bag. Yes, let's does. run the ball. I cannot tell you how many times we get into the red zone or like a short position where we only need two or three yards. We have the best offensive line. I know I'm a broken record, guys, but we have two outstanding running backs, an unbelievable offensive line. Let's guarantee ourselves, A, not turning it over with interceptions. I know he didn't throw one last week, but there was a couple of close calls. We need to rely on that run game. Let's go back on the rock. We can do that against this team. I know they have a tough defensive line, but I really do have faith in our offensive line. And then lastly, for me, I would say protect the ball um, and don't make crazy high-risk plays until you get to that point in the game where you think you're going to need them. We don't need crazy Wildcat, Montgomery throwing the ball, anything like that. Let's just keep it, keep it basic, pound the rock. Let's get some points on the board. And I think we can pick away at these at these Rams. I really do. All right, yeah, Kyle. Yeah. Let's see how your keys of the game compared to mine. Let's hear it. Yeah, I think you were spot on there too. I think you were spot on because in the playoffs, it's it, it's ugly. It's uglier football. I mean, it's it's defensive points are hard to come by. Take three points when you're inside the 35, inside the 30 yard line. Take three points. That is not a loss in any in any by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I think you nailed it too. Turnovers can't turn the ball over. Um, you got to protect the football, and I think that comes with your point. Run, the, run the football. Run the football. Be balanced. Make this Rams team cover everybody. Don't get one dimensional. Uh, be diverse on offense. I mean, even if it, even if the run's struggling a little bit, you want to put yourself in a position to where you can still be balanced. That way, you don't get one dimensional. I actually looked at uh, some of the Rams uh, stats on the year. Um, Kyron Williams, I think, is the key to the game for the Detroit Lions defense uh, and stopping him Mm -hmm. because his play dictates a lot of success for the Rams. Uh, When he exceeds 60 yards rushing, and he hasn't played a full season, so these are games that he's played in. Uh, When he exceeds 60 yards rushing, the Rams are 7-1. and When he is under 60 yards rushing, they are 1-3. and 
Mm-hmm. So that's a key to the game. Make them one dimensional. Make Stafford feel the pressure of Detroit in an opposing team's jersey this time. Uh, make him one dimensional. Put the stress on him. I know he's a gunslinger, and I know he's done it before, where he can throw the ball around. Um, but Sean McVay wants to call a balance office. He comes from that Redskins um, staff way back in the day that had Matt Lafleur, um, Kyle Shanahan on it. He comes from all those minds. They're all balanced, sort of run first guys. If you take Kyron Williams away, that hinders the Rams' offense. Um, and that really makes them one dimensional. I think that's a big key for the Detroit defense. Uh, and to reiterate that too, Stafford and wins has 275 passing yards per game and then losses. He has 247. So that's not a huge difference. It's only 30 yards. Uh, so Stafford, they, he's thrown for 300 and they've lost. He's thrown for, uh, I think 190 and they've won. So the play really rides with Kyron Williams and his Rams run, uh, offense. I think that's huge for Detroit. Um, and then as we said before, run the ball for Detroit. And a balanced attack formation has really hurt the Rams this year. Against San Francisco, uh, six yards to carry, they let up. Baltimore, five yards to carry. The Eagles, five yards to carry. And all three games were balanced attack. San Francisco was 28 runs to 25 passes. Uh, Philly was 38 runs to 39 passes. So it was balanced attack. So it speaks mm-hmm. to the Detroit offense. Be balanced to protect the football and run the football. Um, I think those are the two keys, one for the Detroit defense and one for the Detroit offense. We know Detroit fans how we, uh, Stafford can burn you in the play-action game too. Can. So when, when Kyron is running the ball well, that only makes the, the passing game more dangerous. So got to shut down that run game. Definitely, yeah. And him and Jared Goff are pretty similar in that way. Um, Lions need to run the ball in order to have success off that play-action. So do the Rams. And so... Uh, I think stopping Kyron Williams is a, it should be key number one um, for this Detroit defense. So fans, I know you guys are used to hearing from me and Jared, but now we do have Kyle here. So I was going to ask him, and you guys don't know this, but Kyle did not grow up in Michigan. He lives in Michigan now, but he didn't move here till he got to college. That's how I know him is through Toby. He was Toby's roommate. Anywho. This guy grew up a Packers fan, and I know how we feel about that here in Detroit, but Kyle's a good guy. Kyle, as a Green Bay fan, would you have rather played the Cowboys or the Lions in the first round? This was this was really on my mind yesterday watching the Packers game and watching how the Rams game was unfolding. Um, The more I thought about it, the more I was hoping that we would go to Dallas, to be honest with you. The reason I say that is because this would be the third time they'd play Detroit in Detroit. I think that only hurts uh, Green Bay, especially coming off of a win last time. I think it helps them, too, because they know how to beat them, I guess. But I think a divisional opponent facing them for a third time is so hard, so difficult. And you might, th- I think Dallas may be a scarier opponent than Detroit from everybody else's perspective. Um, but being a fan of a team in the NFC North, I know it's not easy, and Detroit is going to be fired up. On, uh, on Sunday night. So when I was watching the games, I was kind of hoping that we would go to Dallas um, and it kind of worked out that way. I'm glad for my perspective. And as a Lions fan too, I'll get your thoughts on it. Um, would you have rather seen the Rams or the Packers come to town? I think I know the answer, but it might, you might have a different opinion than me. We talked about it last podcast. I would have, I wanted the Rams. I really okay. did. Yeah. It was okay. the same exact reason that you just said. Um, that kind of surprises me a little bit. I, I just, you know, I feel like I don't know what it is, but in my heart of hearts, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I don't I cannot get beat by Jordan Love. Like if Jordan Love came in and cooked us in the playoffs, how I feel about it is like it was the Packers, man. And the Packers kicked us out of the playoffs. Like we were the division winners. You know, Rams come in, they yeah. might be a harder opponent, but they're I don't know, man. They're it's not the Green Bay Packers. I know it's Stafford. I get the whole storyline. It's just like you said, you can't play – you play a same, the same team three times in a year. That's tough. That's that's very tough. So I think it seems like we have the same sort of mindset, mind coming from a team that was snuck into a wild card years coming from the division winner and somebody hosting a playoff game. So, But it sounds like we're, we're kind of thinking the same way there. Very conflicting. I, I don't have it 100% I don't, either way, but, you know, that's just it, – it is what it is. But we're running out of time here, guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Kyle, thanks again so much for filling in today. Appreciate you. Um, yep. If you guys play are me, listening, play me in the comments for being a Packers fan. Go ahead. 
Yeah, let it rip, guys. He deserves it. Um, just kidding. Anyway, if you guys are watching on YouTube, go ahead and leave us likes, comments, and we would really appreciate it if you guys subscribed. Um, like we said, go ahead and check Kyle out. He does our Red Wings content with Toby here. And uh, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, go ahead and leave us a five star review. We really appreciate it. And uh, go Lions, baby! Come on! It's the playoffs. It's the playoffs. Let's the go. Boys are buzzing. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace. We'll see. We'll see you guys next time.